second part of the methods of phylogenetic reconstruction and in this class we will discuss about parametric phylogenetics so there is a term called parametric and non-parametric we came across that in when we discussed about biostatistics right uh, there are two ways any kind of test the statistical test could be parametric or non-parametric uh, one of the example of a parametric test is t-test you know so students t-test isn't it or ANOVA all these are parametric uh, means that uh, it's distribution dependent. It depends on what kind of distribution, the probabilistic uh, distribution or frequency distribution that the population comes from. So there are assumptions. Uh, for example, in uh, a parametric statistics, usually one of the main assumptions is that, uh, you know, it, it follow the population follows a normal distribution or Gaussian or bell-shaped distribution. So if the distribution is not normal, uh, you know, you cannot do that or unless you can, of course, the second option is you need to convert that into the normal distribution before doing all these tests. So if it's completely not a normal distribution, then you need to go with non-parametric tests like a, a kruskal wallis test, you know. Uh, there are so many such tests uh, available. It's a little bit more complicated but more intuitive, you know. Uh, one simple example is uh, uh, average. Average is the parametric way. but uh, distribution independent way is median you know so median income of the country is a lot more uh, you know robust because it is not influenced by outliers like super rich people you know so because of the average income of a country uh, that is called a per capita income right uh, per capita income or PCI is a good indicator of the how wealthy the country is isn't it uh, India's per capita income is uh, without the PPP, uh, that is purchasing power adjustment is around uh, maybe 1,800 US dollars per year. So average Indian earns this much per year, you know. And uh, of course that number is, doesn't sound like uh, normal, isn't it? Because that is a big number, isn't it, if you convert that into Indian rupees. So the reason is that really rich people are actually pulling into bigger number so if you put like rich second rich third rich like that all indian 130 crore people and you pick the middle person and the person's income is called median income so that is independent of how rich uh, the super rich people are or how poor the really low uh, you know income people are so that is called non-parametric right so yeah so that is uh, the idea of this uh, parametric versus non-parametric right so here we can, we will see that we have already seen non-parametric phylogeny in the earlier uh, class uh, that is called maximum parsimony, right? That is actually a non-parametric method. And here we will see a parametric. Parametric means uh, distribution dependent, right? So two of my favorite books for uh, phylogeny are, of course, Barry G. Hall's Phylogenetic Trees, Made Easy, which is really simple intuitive introduction to how to actually make the the, uh, the trees and how to uh, you know interpret it and this is another very interesting book Baum and Smith uh, tree thinking it's very intuitive and very easy way to interpret the phylogenetic tree and more advanced two books which I suggest everybody is uh, the phylogenetic handbook uh, you know so this is Cambridge University's press and then uh, we have William Lieberman, Phylogenetics, the Theory and Practice of Phylogenetic Systematics, the second edition. These two are also very good book. Okay. So I suggest all of you. So the, in, the idea is that there are two kinds of phylogenetic reconstruction methods. First one is distance-based or phenetic or clustering algorithm, isn't it? Uh, minimum evolution or UPGMA and neighbor joining. We discussed all in the last class, right? So all these are called distance-based because... The starting point of all this is a distance matrix. And from distance matrix, you are making a tree. Only one tree will be made. You need to have a distance matrix, you know. So that distance matrix, you can uh, either you can use P distance or Poisson distance, you know, or you can correct the distance using many of the evolutionary models like Jukes Cantor or Kimura 2 parameter. We discussed everything in the last class, right? Uh, so that is why uh, in that sense, all the distance-based methods can incorporate models of molecular evolution. You know, you can adjust the distance with some, you can correct those evolutionary distance with the models, right? And yes, so the, this, all these uh, methods need a distance matrix. 
and the entire differences are actually constrained to that's just number like uh, human and chimpanzee how much is the similarity or how much is the distance just percentage values or probability value right so that is uh, we are losing a lot of information in that so that is why the distance methods are not really accurate then comes the discrete character method these are called cladistics method right so cladistics are actually evolutionary methods a lot more robust and a lot more better than the distance space method but this one is actually very very uh, fast you know while discrete character based methods are kind of slow right so uh, in which you can have non parametric or parametric so uh, non parametric example is maximum parsimony which we discussed uh, the biggest advantage of this parsimony is that it's for ancestral character reconstruction. We will come to know, I mean, we can uh, we can predict how, you know, the ancient sequences had been, even if we don't have any fossil evidence, you know, and we can still predict it, right? But the only problem, the one of the main problem with maximum parsimony is that models, all these Juke scanner or Kimura 2 parameter or uh, HKY, GTR, nothing can be incorporated into it. You know so uh, there is no support for models and of course the long branch attraction there are multiple problems with maximum parsimony you know now coming to parametric method of maximum likelihood and base inference these are the two main methods for phylogenetic reconstruction ml is very accurate but it's very slow but base inference is super fast because it's very intuitive algorithm that they use it and uh, moderately accurate bi so currently the gold standard seems to be bi you know, if you look at the papers, most of the papers look at the basin inference. And uh, yeah, so uh, this both these algorithms of ML and BI is beyond the scope of this class. So I will just uh, briefly introduce what these methods are, which we have already come across when we discuss these concepts in statistics. If you remember, maximum likelihood is that given competing explanations for particular outcome, which explanation should you choose? So the idea is that anything any explanation with maximum likelihood so it is kind of equivalent to the probability you know uh, so probability and likelihood are quite related concepts you know so explanation that makes observed outcome most likely is the one that has to be preferred that is what the maximum likelihood is all about as the name says so it's a standard statistical approach direct ex extension of the probability uh, theory and that can be used in many contexts. So uh, one of my earlier classes, we discussed about how to choose among various models. So for that, we we use the same maximum likelihood method for choosing the best model, right? Best fitting model. Uh, that is called uh, HLRT test, you know, hierarchical likelihood ratio test. So that is exactly what this method is all about. And it's a method for estimating the value of the parameters in a model based on the data that you collected. So parameters in a model means model is an equation and parameters are the equation will have some variables, right? So that what are the exact values of that variable that is called parameter. So to estimate those value, we can use maximum likelihood method, you know. So likelihood is uh, the probability of data given model. So that is what is very, very important probability of data given model. That is likelihood which is equivalent to uh, like you know uh, two lines is basically equal to but it's not equal but in you know it's it's equivalent you know there might be uh, because conceptually these two are different concepts right it's not exactly equal so it is equal in mathematics the three lines means equivalent right equivalent sign so probability of data given model is equivalent to likelihood of model given data so in order to calculate likelihood of model given data, a likelihood of the model basically given one data, right? Uh, that is basically a probability of the data. Are you getting the point? So basically in the phylogeny, model means models of assumption, you know? so that is basically uh, either it could be models of molecular evolution, that is an equation, or models could be trees, right? We don't know which tree is the best, so let us say th a thousand trees are there. Uh, each tree represents each model of the evolution uh, among which, which model to choose that is where the ml stands with right and data in phylogeny is basically our multiple sequence alignment so any kind of uh, uh, phylogenetic reconstruction we start with an aligned uh, alignment you know aligned sequences isn't it 
it could be different species or it could be different genes so that is our data right and from that data uh, then uh, you know uh, given particular model so what is the probability of getting the data that is called likelihood i hope you are it's clear to you so probability of data given model dm is the likelihood now the reverse probability of model given data the opposite of this maximum likelihood is called bayesian inference right so we'll come that in a short while so in phylogeny the data are nothing but fixed set of aligned sequences and the model is a large equation that describes the probability of producing that set of sequences for each tree generated so basically each tree is based on certain equations so that equation is the model and parameters in the equation that gets estimated by maximum likelihood are the mutation rates and the branch length so both of these are being calculated by the maximum likelihood model and of course ml needs a model of evolution you need to specify which model to use that is basically the, the equation like hky and for that how do you choose how to decide the model which model should i choose for the ml of course you need to do a model test best fitting model test so model selection you know we have already covered the topic earlier right and each substitution has an associated likelihood given the branch and certain length right so this uh, we have already discussed the sac containing a biased and fair coins and whatever the result is you know so the result is basically h h h h h no? so that is the data now coming to a model to explanation one is that the, the coin is fair or it could be coin is biased so it looks definitely biased right it's unlikely to get like 10 toss or head right so it looks like a biased one but uh, formally to test it you need to calculate the likelihood for first so each one the probability is 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 isn't it and if it is biased because biased is probability of 0.75 to get the head for tail it is 0.25 so for biased this is the second likelihood and then you cal calculate the likelihood of each, each two that basically is multiplied so that is 0.5 to the power 10 that is 0.56 and then 0 0.01 right and then you take a ratio and then you take a log of that ratio so that we have already discussed it so maximum likelihood method attempts to reconstruct the phylogeny using the explicit model of evolution and this method works when it's used to test the existing tree and even with the simple models of evolution change the computational task is enormous so that is why ml is very very slow you know so that is the reason why you need a, a heuristic method faster method than ml so that is why we are we have bi with us you know so models uh, we have already seen that the models right it could be parameter rich or uh, it could be parameter uh, poor you know simple versus a complex model uh, right and occam's raise the principle and principles of par uh, parsimony isn't it so it's not that always uh, rich complex models are best so maybe simple models could be equally good right so each model can be further changed by i and g parameter i means invariable sites and g means gamma distribution you know so yes yeah, so all these are different different models so each model i mean we can use these models in the maximum likelihood that is the idea right and also it predicts the ancestral sequences at the branch point in the c so nodes. so that's something like maximum parsimony ancestral sequence reconstruction is possible and can provide information about the timing of the acquiring of the novel trait or mutation so the timing will come uh, later in this class about uh, time calibrating the tree so you can use many software for doing this maximum likelihood like mega beast or pamel all right so paml is basically phylogeny analysis using maximum likelihood one of the oldest software for it or raxml phylip uh, you know all those things you can actually use it and all these add-ins are also available in genius my favorite tool for fin windows users is genius so you can use all these add-in inside the genius for all those things and you can uh, use uh, yeah so that is the the idea is that you need uh, you know you, you need to have a confidence also right so like statistical probability for each branch how much so you need to do some bootstrapping test later so confidence intervals are provided and selection can be inferred if you do maximum likelihood reconstruction. So what are the assumptions for the maximum likelihood? The frequ frequencies of DNA transitions and transversions. So uh, you know you are you are guessing 
these are the transition transversion probability in the nature you know so it's basically a, a kind of a matrix uh, you know like this matrix you see but this is not the dna but this is a protein matrix you know so this protein matrix is uh, this is called pam250 what is that point accepted mutation so how likely for one amino acid to change to another amino acid you know like uh, uh, for example this uh, uh, what should i say these are the you know 20 amino acids essential amino acid and this is also 20 essential amino acids so basically this is uh, you know this is a, a mirror image so only one triangle makes sense here the center uh, line and here and here are exactly same thing for example minus one here minus one here then comes zero here is also zero right so the idea is that how likely for one amino acid to change to another if sterically similar stereotypically similar they look wise or how bulky it is the shape then changes is accepted right we have discussed all this in uh, selection right but if it is completely different for example a polar amino acid changing to a non-polar amino acid right that is unlikely isn't it so then you need a uh, you know the chances are very less so low probability so that is the idea about it right so assumption for protein sequence changes are taken from pam matrix that is point accepted mutations and are quite likely to be violated in real data but for uh, dna sequence it is much more simpler transition probability and transposition probability or kappa you know and each nucleotide site evolves independently that the tree is calculated separately for each site and the product of likelihood for each site provides overall likelihood for the so data you know coming next is bayesian inference so uh, maximal likelihood estimate the earlier one suffers from only examining one tree topology at one time so but the bayesian is not like that not just one but it is like tree topology itself is a separate parameter to be estimated you know while examining multiple topologies so that is the the main idea the difference here bayesian and maximum likelihood but uh, if you look the core of bayesian theory that itself is a fundamentally different approach to statistics so usual statistics is frequentist while bayesian is depends on the posterior and prior probabilities you know so bayesian statistics is a concept that is uh, you know that uh, concept that the probability of event depends partly on your initial estimate of that event prior probability we do that in our everyday right so whenever we come across something new about a politician or something you know uh, let us say politician right so you know something about the politician uh, how good the politician is so it's a very if i simply say that the politician is Harvard educator and uh, uh, you know very efficient highly uh, time manager you know so will you vote for that politician you would say yes then i simply add one more information the politician is highly corrupt then you might have naturally changed right so it depends on your initial estimate and your relearning. That is what the base inference is all about. It's not fixed, you know. So yeah, so it depends on that initial event, the prior probability, and prior probability becomes posterior again. It becomes prior. So that is the idea of this base inference. You know? Massive amount of theory and ongoing philosophical dispute segregate statisticians between Bayesians and frequentists. So frequentists means like coin tossing you know the probability to get this one it's a simple arithmetic you can calculate what is the probability to get that thing right so frequentist is also depends on uh, frequency of distribution and all those ANOVA t-test everything right but Bayesian is com fundamentally different concept so this is the, the Bayesian equation probability of uh, uh, model given data the theta here is model model given data md the other one is probability of data given model that is the uh, likelihood you know so in this equation you will see that probability of data given model this is likelihood multiplied by probability of model divided by probability of data so that is what the Bayesian inference formula is so posterior probability of a probability of a given b is probability of b given a probability of a divided by probability of b this is the equation so as you can see that in Bayesian equation likelihood is already there and these are prior probability while this is pro posterior probability you know same example if you go back the sack containing half is fair coin half is biased coin we have already calculated this is a result and we have already calculated the 
likelihood for each of these explanation right and then we did a ratio of the likelihood and log likelihood test also we did now how about a uh, Bayesian approach here so it is basically like what is the probability that the coin is biased calculating exact probability that the coin is biased that you cannot do that with the likelihood you need a formula so that that is a formula so uh, the formula is probability of model given data model means we have two model model one and model two right one is a uh, fair one is biased so what is the probability that the model is this so probability of biased model given the data data is only one right h h 10 times h is equal to probability of data given model biased model that is basically uh, the likelihood see it is there on uh, on the nominator numerator uh, the likelihood is there in the equation of the uh, Bayesian inference isn't it so probability of this is this is basically the uh, the, the first one the part first part is called likelihood multiplied by probability of biased model divided by prior, uh, probability of the data right so pro probability of biased model is 0.5 the data is a uh, probability combined probability across two paths so that is 0.98 so if you do this calculation it's going to be 0.98 is the probability of getting that it's pretty uh, you know high probability that the coin is biased right 0.98 means almost one that is almost 100 percent it's, it's that now if you change the initial estimate suppose a sack has 99 percent fair and one percent biased see in earlier example 50 percent fair and 50 percent biased right now let us say suppose the sack has only one percentage biased and then you get this data see so it depends on the prior estimate Right, that is what the base inference is all about and if you do this calculation then you are going to get 0.37 that is only 37 percent chance you know because your prior uh, probability is very low you know so that is the reason that is how the Bayesian inference work so frequentist versus Bayesian the two, fundamentally these two approaches are very different you know in frequentists, the parameters have unknown but fixed value and therefore it cannot be treated as random variable but that is not the case in the base inference. Uh, like hypothesis testing, confidence intervals, all are part of the frequentist uh, in inference. But for Bayesian, the probability can be seen as extension of logic that enables reasoning with prepositions of uh, whose truth and falsity is uncertain. So it is something like a fuzzy logic. Uh, you know, so it is not like certainly true or certainly false, little bit true, little bit false. So it's that kind of thing you can do that with base inference. So if you want to estimate the topology of branch length and mutation rates, you know, uh, by making guess of the, the parameter value. So you're actually making uh, some guesses and then you're refining it when in the light of the new evidence. So that is how the base inference work, but it's really complicated, you know, but the idea is this you are having some initial guesses of the parameter of the equation then you keep on refining it you know as you traverse right in in the space you know so that is what the basin uh, thing so it's like feeling around a surface and trying to find the highest peak right so randomly you are in a valley you you uh, somebody pick you in some places in a valley and then you are trying to find the highest peak you know so that is how the local peak and global peak isn't it so it's a heuristic method to make this optimal uh, equation or optimal parameter uh, much more faster you know maximum likelihood is time time taking but basin is very fast so one of the common algorithm which, which we use is called markov chain monte carlo or markov chain monte carlo metropolis hasting algorithm MC, 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 very fancy sounding, isn't it? Yes, it is actually coming from the Monte Carlo is a very famous, uh, you know, uh, casino in the Euro, Spain, isn't it? So this Monte Carlo, the gambler's paradise, isn't it? So it has actually originated from the, 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 the algorithm, you know? So, uh, yeah, so it, it's actually introduced some elements of randomness into the modified parameter. So that actually significantly improves uh, you know, the, uh, estimating the parameters in in a model, right? So one simple example is that, okay, 
you you know so there is let us say there is a family function you are a super rich person of course then there is a family function in delhi and delhi has got three hotels holiday inn leela kempinski and taj all are five star hotels isn't it so uh, and so the first probability that this values means probability that a family member stays in a particular hotel so in a function marriage function or you are inviting so many people and some people have stayed in holiday inn some are in leela kempinski and some are in taj delhi and the the relative had a fall, faulty plumbing you know so that is the the here it is a so that means that here this first probability is a probability that a family member stays in a particular hotel so 0.6 is the probability that a holiday inn 0.3 so most of the family members stayed in holiday inn few stayed in leela and uh, very less stayed in taj now in holiday inn uh, a room to have faulty plumbing is 0.33 around 22 percentage chance leela chance is very low because it's really expensive in it isn't it 13 percentage now for taj it is quite high 0.62 percentage now the relative complains that uh, his or her room had faulty ceiling and then what is the probability that he stayed in any of this hotel to do that kind of calculation it's actually very simple using the basin inference you know so a is the outcome the family member stayed in a hotel room with a bad, bad plumbing and now uh, the idea is that what is the probability that the person stayed in leela kempinski to calculate that all you need to do is that this chain will be numerator 0.3 multiplied by 0.13 divided by all chains you know the chain number one plus chain number two plus chain number three you know 0.6 multiplied by 0.22 plus 0.3 multiplied by 0.13 plus 0.1 multiplied by 0.6 so you will get that answer yet another of the the problem here you know out of the amazon shipment in your local city only three delivery men raj kumar and gopal delivers you know so 0.3 is the probability that raj gets the shipment kumar 0.5 gopal 0.2 so most of the shipment is handled by kumar isn't it 0.5 and among the shipment that raj is handling he you know the uh, this is basically the the uh, the chance that he miss the consignment 0.3 very high probability right kumar doesn't miss much 0.1 only while gopal miss much higher 0.4 that is around 50 percent days of the consignment gopal misses now a is that you missed a parcel right now, what is the probability that it was handled by Gopal, the guy, this, this person? There is a high chance, isn't it? So, to, to know that 0.2 multiplied by 0.43 divided by all this, 0.2 multiplied by 0.43 plus, 0.5 multiplied by 0.18 plus, 0.3 multiplied by 0.31 is equal to 0.32. So, it's quite high, you know. So, that is how you can do this. Uh, the base inference you know so for mcmc the basic procedure is that we are starting with a simple tree like neighbor joining tree you know so the simple tree uh, i mean the, the initial tree doesn't actually influence much about the final tree outcome and then you are actually calculating the model the parameter you keep on refining the probability based on the the uh, the prior so prior then posterior the, the posterior becomes again prior you know so it keeps on your refining 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 till you find the optimal parameters of your uh, your equation so that is how the mcmc work so it is something like you know uh, you are basically uh, you are starting here multiple starting point you no know? and you are you are going up 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 you are getting local maximum here second jump so going going up here second third fourth, fourth fifth now you can only you need to find is a out of local which is the highest so that is going to be the global maximum so instead of looking all around to find where is a global maximum which is very uh, you know time taking right millions of trees instead of that you're seeding randomly and looking for the local max so the same procedure you can use it even for uh, finding the the treasure treasure hunt it has been used in uh, one of the shipwreck with lots of gold 
uh, that has actually, f uh, you know, shipwreck happened almost two centuries back in a, in a Gulf, you know, in, in near the U.S. Uh, coast. So the maximum, uh, this basin approach has been used to find that, uh, to discover that shipwreck and get all the, uh, you know, gold, you know, treasure hunt. Yes, it has happened. So that is what, right? If it is up, you take up, no problem, to find the local max. But if it is down, you know, so it is actually, if, if the hiker is going down, then if it is very small down, it's quite likely. So move is fine. But if the down is really large, then, uh, you know, you will not go. So all these are the, how the, the, the statistics work, you know, how the, uh, the algorithms work. Coming next is confidence. So most of these methods, whatever the methods that we discussed, do not provide any measure of the statistical confidence in the tree. You know, so we do all these tests like t-test and ANOVA to get the confidence. The confidence is really important. But base inference is an exception. It already provides the confidence in form of prior probabilities, PP values. You know. So to make any complex biological inference based on tree or hypothesis, confidence is quite essential. So you can use confidence by resampling, you know, so it's not like normal sampling, but it's actually a resampling or simulated sampling, replicate measurement from the same sample. Right? There are multiple approaches for resampling confidence. Uh, the idea is that confidence, uh, you need to calculate the confidence in all other methods except base inference, like maximum likelihood or neighbor joining, you know. So how do you actually do that? So you need uh, to do this resampling method like jackknifing, cross validation, permutation test and bootstrapping. Out of all this, the bootstrapping is the most commonly used confidence uh, determination test for phylogenetic reconstruction, you know. So bootstrapping is basically, uh, it involves repeatedly taking the random sample and to reconstruct, I mean, and to make a, a separate data set. You know, so uh, the bootstrap, let us say the next uh, slide, I, it's much clearer. For example, here is um, the real multiple alignment. And from this, these are the, the columns, right? These are the nucleotide position. There are 16 positions in it. So from this, you are making one pseudo replicate by taking uh, first, uh, the second position, then seven. These are all completely random, you know. And some positions can be taken multiple times, like position number four, you are taking four and a four, you know, these two positions. You know? So from one, you're making subsample multiple times. So that is how the resampling work. Then you are considering the tree. And the idea is that after this multiple resampling, especially thousand times resampling from the same alignment, how many times a branch happens? Is a branch is appearing in, uh, uh, you know, 89 percentage of the time, then that is this 89. B stands for base inference 88, that is the posterior probability. Uh, basin PP is already built in the basin, I told you, but for likelihood and neighbor joining and all, uh, you know, or ma maximum parsimony, you need to do this uh, bootstrapping to calculate the confidence interval. So, uh, this likelihood 99, what does that mean? So this clade is happening in 99% of the trees that they analyzed, around 1000 bootstrapping. So 99% means around 100 trees, uh, I mean 900 trees, no? 990 trees had that, uh, you know, that branch. That is the idea of this maximum likelihood, uh, I mean, uh, this one, the bootstrapping, isn't it? So consensus tree means uh, you know, out of many trees, how do you choose the which tree should I go with? So that is what, uh, the, uh, you know, so this one. So wherever this, uh, you know, this number is more than 50 only, you're taking. So less than 50, you're not taking, right? That is the consensus is all about. So multiple tree defined based on the threshold score, which can be Bayesian PP or maximum likelihood bootstrap proportion with X is more than 50. So that means the majority rule. 50% like the democratic system, more than 50 is, uh, you know, simple majority, right? If more than 50% of 1000 bootstrap had one branch, then you are accepting that branch as a consensus tree. That is the idea of this consensus tree making, right? And multi-local phylogeny means analysis at more than one locus uh, to improve the phylogenetic inference. So instead of just using one gene, like ITS1 or ITS2, 
you are using three or four genes and you are making a phylogeny inference combining all these genes together that is called multi-local phylogeny you know that improves the phylogenetic inference dramatically that is uh, much better than uh, the trees based on just one gene right and then yes so that is the called multi-local another term here is called concatenation so concatenation is uh, you know it is quite criticized but it's very popular method uh, it is based on Arnold Klug's call for total evidence a philosophical mandate to include all available information into the phylogenetic analysis so usually in phylogenetic analysis only one gene we are using a better approach I told you two genes or three genes multi-local approach much better approach is you know also look at the uh, the morphology biochemistry you know especially in the, in the bacteria right uh, and the colony forming units the the shape and structure everything together and make one tree that is called concatenation you know so combining multiple sequence alignment from different genes into one super matrix rbcl uh, multiple sequence alignment then same species you are making another alignment with the trn lf spacer and third one with 18 srrna then you are combining all these DNA together and making one super matrix and then you are constructing the tree from it. Of course, you need to select the model, best fitting model uh, separately for each partition, you know, so that is really important. Coming next is time calibration. So time calibrated tree or time tree is a tree which is in which the branch length is drawn proportional to the time, evolutionary time. This tree is a time tree. You can see that early Cretaceous, Paleocene, Eocene, Oligocene, Paleogene, Cenozoic, you know, exactly we know when this split happened. Of course, there is a confidence range, you know, interval, lower and upper limit, you know, that is what this line is all about. So how do you make this kind of tree? So it depends, uh, you know, this tree can be constructed by a molecular clock hypothesis. That hypothesis is a very, very famous one. In 1960s, the Linus Pauling, you might know, the very famous uh, chemist, isn't it? And he's a double Nobel laureate, chemistry and peace, because he he is uh, also involved with social activism and he's a very good uh, science communicator. You know, Linus Pauling is one of my favorite authors. You know, he's a, a fantastic writer. And Emily Zuckerall, you know, so Emily and uh, Linus Pauling in 1962, they published a finding about this. Uh, uh, their idea is that DNA sequence or protein sequences, the mutation are happening at constant rates. And just by looking two sequences, like for example, human and chimpanzee today, we can calculate when the split happened, going back in time, you know. So that idea is very interesting, you know, that is very curiosity driven, isn't it? So DNA and protein molecules mutate at constant rates over time. That means differences in DNA or protein sequences between two species are proportional to the time elapsed since they diverged. You know, that is evolution rates are constant. That is called molecular clock. So just by looking at that, uh, by estimating, uh, you know, how they are uh, diverging, you can actually make this kind of tree. And a little bit better than this molecular clock hypothesis is called a relaxed molecular clock, in which uh, the strict molecular clock means that every branch uh, mutates at the constant rates but relaxed means each branch can have its own mutation rates that is much better though it is a little bit more complicated equation becomes more complicated right and uh, yeah so that is a be better approach now much better approach for this uh, making this kind of tree is you are actually knowing the fossils in it you know so you are de delimiting the tree with dated fossils you know, so dated fossils as calibration checkpoint. So dated, how do you date the fossil by various methods that we will discuss later. Uh, one of the common approaches, is, uh, uh, you know, radiometric dating like C14, isn't it? So by using this uh, radiometric dating, you know that this fossil is at least, uh, you know, this fossil, the fossil number F is at least 65 million years old. Then, uh, you know, you're putting 65 million right here. You know, that is how you're doing it. It's the most reliable, but mind that fossils are incomplete. Not all the nodes have the fossils, you know. So fossils appear and disappear. 
and the, the small window we should be really lucky to find the, the fossils you know so that is the idea of this time calibration right for example here let us say that these are human and chimpanzee you know so human and chimpanzee is uh, it's approximately five to six million years old right so right now we have two and uh, one gene there are two differences cg and tt right so we know that it appears this each one appears 25 million years so you can go back 25 million years then common ancestor right so at least 50 million years back so that is why the human chimp is much more younger so this is not human chimp so it's 50 million years separation right so that is how the idea of this uh, you know so you can uh, the molecular clock hypothesis so you can use software like beast basin evolutionary analysis sampling trees beast very popular freeware for time calibrating the phylogenetic tree right so general phylogenetic inference workflow is, is just a summary first step is to align the orthologous sequences or concatenated orthologous sequences concatenation means uh, you're combining from multiple uh, genes you know to get one super matrix orthologous means sequences separated by uh, you know those speciation events right not paralogous sequence that is basically by the gene duplication events isn't it after alignment, you're performing the model test to find which maximum likelihood, uh, which, uh, you know, the, the molecular uh, evolutionary model is fitting well. So you can use a maximum likelihood based model test for it. Third step is to calculate the distance, pairwise distance using the best fitting model, which is again, that is an optional. You don't need the distance. You can directly go to maximum parsimony or ML method. Then finally, you do the phylogenetic assessment. Maximum likelihood, parsimony, or base inference, out of which base inference seems to be the most preferred these days. And uh, if you're doing maximum likelihood or, uh, you know, the maximum parsimony, then bootstrapping for confidence is really important. Uh, usually we do that with 1000 bootstrap values. And then present the bootstrap consensus tree. Usually majority rule bootstrap is what we all use. Majority rule means the trees with more than 50 percentage bootstrapping is what is shown in the final tree so the final tree is a consensus tree based on majority rule bootstrap proportions you know so that is the idea the finally you are presenting the consensus tree out of millions of trees isn't it in the case of uh, maximum likelihood right that's it